face that this world has forgotten. Mm, what is up you guys and of course welcome to another episode of the who was really bitter and this time we're gonna look at upon Duryo vs Staraptor the two normal flying birds that are Consider actually the best in many areas. Now the thing is here, Durio for the longest time was considered one of the best flying types in the game, mainly because of Drill Pack, and was just assigned in Generation 4 when Staraptor was introduced. However, Durio has gotten buffs after buff after that, and actually got a raise in his attack and speed in Generation 7 together with a broader move pool actually. So I would say right now they're on par with one another in how to function which is really interesting considering the star after has fundamentally actually been the same throughout generation it's whether or not that same activity really is enough to outshine dudrio and well that's why we're here so we're going to go over the Oro arcan theme mupal and stats to find out which one of these two really are better so before going into that we're gonna cover of course the normal flying combination so inherently um flying type is actually a fairly Decent defensive type being normal, not so much, and normal actually doesn't necessarily help with anything when it comes to resistance as an immunity. Well, we do get an extra immunity in Ghost to get it with ground. We do have the same resistance of a flying type, which is the bugging grass. We lose the fighting resistance due to a normal type combination. However, we do remain the same weaknesses of electric, ice, and rock. So one could say a flying type do negate one of the bigger issues for a normal type, which of course is only weakness to fighting. However, Nothing really is a sort of flying type, and making sure that you lose one of the more, I say, eccentric and more interesting resistances in finding, which is always a bad thing since, of course, finding is very, very spammable throughout the generation and still kind of are. However, two immunities in Ghost and Ground is very good, though clearly weak to Stealth Frogs due to, of course, the type of condition itself. So, with that in mind, we're going to cover Dudro first since it was introduced first. Now, Dudrio on his own right is actually fairly interesting. It is very much what I would define a sweeper or wall breaker. It's very clear what it's supposed to do. As the stats really speaks for themselves. We have nothing when it comes to HP. Its defenses and special defense are really down there. 17, 60 and special attack at 60. Yeah, it's not going to do any defensive role anytime soon. However, 110 in both attack and its speed. Yeah, it's... It's a lot. Actually, Dudio has only 100 speed generation 7, and of course, it got a small buff in generation 6 with attack, which actually helped it quite a lot. It changed the meta for it since it actually outspeed a lot of threats that was before this generation actually faster. Look at him, and things that are usually speeder. Now, tying with 110 Pokemon really makes sure that you are in a very, very exclusive club of being offensively really active and quite a lot. When it comes to abilities, however, early burl, runaway, and tackle feet aren't really that interesting. While tackle feet is interesting because it boosts your evasion if you get confused and consider that you get fresh on Dujo, it is an option. However, I would never recommend that since you're forcing yourself to get confused and you're forcing yourself to attack two to three times. However, it is an option, but over that, that would actually say that runaway is its greatest asset. Which means it doesn't do anything, of course. No, I'm of course talking about the early bird, which makes sure that you wake up at least one turn earlier than you're supposed to. If we're looking at the likes of Spore, spammers like Breloom, it, it's a fair switch in to go for that. Then again, I would say all of its abilities are kind of mad best. That said though, Dujo is not about its abilities, it is about its move pool. So with that said, let's check just that out. Now, Dujo's move pool has actually been kind of bad. It has been very, very narrow-minded where when it was introduced till actually generation 5 i believe it only had drill pack and return as its stab move and nothing really to fill that out unless you know still and whatnot most of those things have been resolved have been resolved quite well so much so that of course in generation 7 it's a viable threat uh, we're gonna actually cover which moves that was introduced in generation 7 to kind of define why they are so important though we're gonna go through the list as is so we have quick attack which is a very decent move actually uh, priority always is nice with offensive Pokemon to be able to knock out Pace Burn and Scarf and whatnot. And ever is there, Frash as mentioned before, Pursuit. Pursuit Driver Pokemon is always a very, very good thing, and that this Pokemon gets that is actually fairly formidable in many ways, actually. The Drill Pack, which is really decent, though clearly there are other moves to be considered with, like Rebirth and whatnot. Uh, Jump Kick, introduced in this generation. 
And this is a big deal. Of course, it makes sure that you are actually hitting the steel and rock types for super effective damage. Finally, it actually was not able to do that till generation 7, which made it was easily checked. This is no longer the case. While it is checkable, it's not as easily checkable. Jump kick really is what I would say a game changer for it, and it also makes the Pokemon itself a lot more interesting because you have a really really effective finding hits. Uh, agility, very I would say not use that, but it is an option. Uh, acupuncture is just weird, but it does raise your attack or some not necessarily attack, but any stats by two. Sword stance also a move that was introduced in Generation Seven for it. This really helps out quite a lot, mainly because you can actually set up against offensive threat. Before this, you only had work up, and quite frankly, work up is very very boring. But uh, yeah, I would say sword stance is one of those things that really just pushes Pokemon over the edge. It can be a very effective sweeper, and instead before one and ten speed kind of forces you to be very very scary and with quick attack in mind you also aren't necessarily that easily checkable which is great sword stance is a game changer for it for sure steel wing uh worthless filler not a jump kick is around haze it this pokemon actually can see haze which means you recover hp but also can engage pokemon stat boosting which is an interesting aspect mirror move is always there and of course see mirror move is a option that actually makes you go for a effective hit while raising your attack by two and that's always a scary thing <laughs> and uh, Duryo I would say is one of the better ones with that uh, and it's a very strong option for a lot of Pokemon but Duryo stands out due to it just raising his attack with four it goes for C move. Uh, Brave Bird it's also awesome it's its main stab actually to get with return which is not mentioned here. Knockoff which is a very good filler um, Thing is here, knockoff always works against no matter what the matchup, but overall, since knocking off an item is very effective against a lot of things, it is able to pull it off, though it was a more viable option towards it in generation 6. Now that jump kick is around, I would say it's good that it is there, but it's a it's a meaningless filler with C moves active. Uh, that said, if you're facing off against Pokemon that could be capitalized on it, like a Violet Pokemon or of course Psychics, you're able to pull that off really nicely. Uh, and of course, the dark finding combo is also a very strong combination overall. Stop and Tantrum, while a weak move, is an awesome move because you do hit your uh, electric type by super effective damage. And of course, um, if you have Pokemon with immunity, such of course Ghost type, the Gengar is a good example of this. Uh, you go for the return, you miss that due to immunity, then Stop and Tantrum will do double the damage. The last the turn that follows, you can ensure to get a KO unless it doesn't outspeed you, that is. Uh, last moves are from the generation 1 actually when you didn't trade off the body slam always great the double edge is usually what one prefer and the curse is there curse is great by the way you don't want to mention that real quick white herb curse is a very viable option getting your offense up by one and attack by one is very very hard to check plus getting the extra defense is really helpful for a pokemon that is a threat child uh, whirlwind and reflect are the last mention moves I would say that they aren't necessarily good for Dudu itself, but it is helpful if you're predicting switches and of course with Reflect able to actually soak damage. But overall, it's very clear that this Pokemon is a very strong setup sweeper and um, for Generation 7 standard, I would say that this Pokemon has gotten a bit forgotten actually. It's very viable, it's very effective. And um, I don't believe it's born by the tiers as much and that um, the Spogan are saying that it is. It definitely works really well in, um, what do you call it, uh, really used and underused. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it overall to overuse, though clearly because of the meta necessarily doesn't allow 1 in 10 speed to be that effective. However, Dudra overall is really, really scary. And after one sword stance, there really aren't that many things that want to come in against that because it's dual combination of stab to get with jump kick really is enforcing Pokemon to actually be killed by it easily. And of course, with Seam of the Mind, it really just are impossible to deal with head on. So overall, it's very good that this Pokemon is fragile because if it wasn't that, this Pokemon would have been closer broken with the upgrades it got in generation 7, which is really great. The Pokemon is clearly back on top and it only need Pokemon or players actually to recognize that. That said though, we have one more Pokemon to cover, and it's a Pokemon that has been defined for this same reasons actually, but we're talking for a longer time. It is whether or not it makes that Pokemon better than Dudrio. So, enter Staraptor. Now, before going into this, Staraptor is a very, very scary Pokemon, and um, it really, really takes a lot to be even compared to this beast, because quite frankly, 
it has been roughly working the same as Regeneration 4. The only change it got was Generation 5 with a hidden ability. Outside of that, it's fundamentally the same and will most likely stay fundamentally the same as generations to come. Uh, looking at it, we have 85 in its HP, which is really good. 120 in its attack, so it's definitely hitting harder than Dudrio. 70 in its defense and 16 in special defense. Slightly bulkier than Dudrio. Special attack is lower, which I don't think matters. Um, and then 100 in speed, so it's definitely slower. However, its abilities of Intimidate and Reckless are very good abilities for it. Intimidate, of course, because it does mean that you can switch into stuff and possibly recover. Looking at your HP, you're definitely able to pull up potentially a bulkier role. It was something that actually did in Generation 4. However, Reckless is where it's at because it do have two moves that are boosted by Reckless in Double Edge and Bravebird. And of course, with the higher HP, you're able to spam that more effectively and with Reckless in mind, also hit that much harder. So this Pokemon is definitely defined by its stats. It's very clear that this Pokemon is a wall breaker, alternatively a choice scarf wall breaker. It doesn't necessarily work as a sweeper, though a Lakian sweeper with scarf is an option, but overall it's very clear that this Pokemon is just about to come in, hurt something, and hurt something real bad, and hope it can't soak the hit if it switches out to come in with the next one. So Staraptor, scary mon, definitely a scary mon, but with that said we also have a Moopul to cover, which is just as scary to be honest. Because as stated before, Pokemon are definitely defined with their Moopul in mind, and since Staraptor haven't changed in Generation 4 really when it comes to its Moopul, there are good reasons for that. Its Moopul is really, really, really bad. It doesn't necessarily have anything, but the things it has is so relevant that it makes its Pokemon tremendously effective against a lot of things. Uh, first and foremost, close combat. It's... It's a really good move to get, uh, really powerful, and with Choice Scarf in mind, this thing really doesn't have a Pokemon that switches into this Pokemon without being hit by a super effective hit, which is why this Pokemon has been relevant for so long. Of course, we have Agility, which is always great. Uh, Braver, Double Edge are your main stab, which I stated before, due to Reckless, you hit just that much harder. Steel Wing, which is always an option. Um, I would say with Close Combat in mind that it's irrelevant, but it's there at least. Uh, U-turn, which is one of the defining factor of Staraptor and definitely an edge it has over Dudrio because it means that this Pokemon with Choice Scarf in mind can pivot it around, doesn't need to say it. You can predict the switch out and you will do that just effectively as it is. Uh, Pursuit, same thing there as Dudrio, you can lock in your opponent and consider that this Pokemon can run Choice Band too. It is something you don't want to be forced to be dealing with. Uh, mirror move works fundamentally the same as Studio. That is, you steal a C move from your opponent, and of course, get yourself boosted by two. And that's really, really scary. Uh, Final Gambit, which is always a great move for Star After Mail, because 85 base HP means that you really, really can get a lot of HP. And Final Gambit, really, really, as an early move, really just kind of sting. Uh, definitely can take a Pokemon down with him. Uh, Roost, fair option, consider that you have a lot of HP, as stated before, and of course with Reckless move in mind, it kind of helps. Uh, Defog, uh, definitely should say this, that while this Pokemon isn't necessarily a good Defogger, only having an option is always going to be helpful. Same thing with Heat Wave, its special attack is negligible, but it has Heat Wave and Rara. Going to be a situation where that could be effective in a league environment. Though that said, it, there is nothing to do with stabs so that's fine, it really does resolve, or doesn't resolve, I would say. And last moves are moves that are there because it really doesn't get anything more. Uh, Tailwind, decent support if you don't want to go for agility yourself and just help the team as it is. A Tailwind and U-turn is always a fair option. Looking at Whimsicott for the same kind of strategy and it could work with Star After in mind. Sky Attack, Power Herb combination with possible acrobatics is a decent combination. Endeavor, Focus Sash lead with Endeavor is always an interesting aspect to have, and I do believe Star After is a viable Pokemon for that same reason. And of course, Laser Focus just to be mentioned here, because I really couldn't find any other move that would be interesting. Laser Focus, of course, make sure that your next move is crit. So I guess with a switch out, the Laser Focus could be interesting to be able to get the next hit that much harder. One thing I forgot to mention this Pokemon get that actually is a viable option is Quick Attack. Um, while it doesn't change the point to point fundamentally, it is slower than Dudrio, so having access to Quick Attack can resolve a few pickup kills. And since it's with Stab in mind, it does sting a, lit a little bit harder. 60 base power, while not a whole lot, with 120 attack, 
it still stinks. So uh, I really, really would appreciate that to see Star Raptor fundamentally work in that factor. Overall, though, I say Star Raptor is mostly used as a choice scarfer, and it is for very good reasons. One of base speed really is a bit on the slow side, actually, and definitely in this meta. But Choice Scarf plus 120 attack and Reckless, it definitely hurts things. There are very few switches to this Pokemon, and um, I would say that due to that it is, I would say, locked with Choice Scarf, it is easy to predict against. But then again, if you don't have a switch in for those four or three moves, you're really looking at yourself to be in a very bad spot. However, with agility in mind, these are easily resolved, but it does kind of force you to set up with speed in mind, and then you, you kind of have to hope. Uh, that at least you're able to pick up the last kills because if you go for agility, you're in for the in-game. That's simply as that. Overall, though, Star Raptor is a tremendous threat and definitely one of the best Pokemon in the game, and more so, probably the, if not one of the best, at least, best normal flying types in the game. So, for my ending thoughts here, I was really looking upon this as which one I would prefer in the long game. Um, thing is here, there's a reason Star Raptor is in OU. It really, really just just with the pilot in mind, um, with U-turn and Choice Scarf, it really is a defining Pokemon for it because there really are no other Pokemon like that, and uh, it does do the role really well. Let's really just boost its power to, well, Uber's level almost because it really, really does sting against everything it has against it. That said. I very much prefer Duryo in a lot of other aspects. Now, Star Raptor is one of the best Pokemon in the game, no doubt about that. Um, but it's very one-dimensional. I do believe Duryo has, as of this generation, gotten the tools to become a lot stronger, but haven't been used to getting that much stronger. It is a Pokemon that is due to Sword Stance and a big boost in its speed, became a lot more threatening than Star Raptor. While Star Raptor is scary turn one, Dudrio is scarier the turns that follows. Because for me, it's about how they are defined. I think Star Raptor is one of the most one-dimensional Pokemon in the whole game. While it, its copy-paste set, you know, the Scarf variant is on paper stronger than Dudrio, because it really is. I won't negate that. I think, I, if I'm being completely honest, it's what it's all about. But Dudrio has a different layer upon it now, and now with a stronger speed tier and, of course, Sword Stance and Jump Kick, they really are very, very defined that Dudrio can do a lot more than just be in a possible choice plan and choice scarf, where it's there to stay. And with Life for Remind, it is a, it's a very scary Pokemon. While it does like the HP to spam, um, I would say, its main moves of Double Edge and uh, Brave Bird, in the end of the day, you just want to take things out, and I mean, Star Raptor and Duryo do the same things. I would prefer Duryo because, well, it doesn't necessarily lose its defenses after close combat. Jump Kick is, however, a big risk, and it is not as consistent as close combat, but I believe having the option to do more than just be a choice scarfer is much, much more rewarding, at least so in a league concept, of course. In this moment here, I do believe Star Raptor has the abilities and reasons to be stronger than Duryo, but just that Duryo has become a lot better than it was really is for me an indication that it needs to win because it is funnier to use than Star Raptor. <laughs> so, of course, with that said, what do you guys think? Which of these two Pokemon do you prefer? And you know why, really? Uh, as stated before, I, I prefer Duryo due to the speed tier. I think it resolves a whole lot of issues that. I don't believe Star Raptor has resolved yet, and it hasn't had a reason to either. But the meta, as long as the meta goes, Generation 7, it really isn't as effective. And I do believe Duju, due to speed, can do a lot more work than Star Raptor at the moment can. That said, though, the copy paste role is stronger than Star Raptor. It's just that Duju, in my honest opinions, are funny to use, and that's where it's at for me. So, with that said, guys, thank you for, of course, watching, and join us next week for this matchup.